Hello everyone and welcome to Divide and Conquer Overhaul version 6 Duodine slash Dwarves Reformed. Here we are, sons of Gondor with Gondor. Gondor has Thank you. Has some great changes done to it. First of all, a lot of unique generals. Boromir, Captain General Boromir is no longer the White Tower, you know, the Wardens of the White Tower bodyguard, but the Osgiliath veterans. We're gonna talk about that later. But yeah, Osgiliath veterans. While our father has the great White Tower legions of Minister, Wardens of the White Tower. Ready your weapons. I feel like that makes more sense, honestly. Protect the than, uh, than the other way around. This is, I think, General, yeah, General Bodyguard. Of course, uh, Faramir comes with the Ethelian Rangers, and uh, I think that's about it. it. Changes. Yeah, that's it. Everyone else is unique as they can get. So, uh, what else can you talk about Mordor? About Minas Tirith? Minas Tirith, of course, uh, will get you your bomb guards, get you Gondor infantry, Gondor archers, and you can recruit them uh, immediately. It will cost you an arm and a leg, but you can recruit them. Osgiliath, of course, not changed. You can rebuild them, and from then on, you can recruit your uh, Osgiliath veterans. But until then, Osgiliath veterans are your your only general is Boromir with them. Mordor is difficult. Version six, of course, version version five brought changes to Mordor and their heavily defensive late game units and aggressive early game units, especially the Temple Knights, the Dark Numenorians, who will give you run for your money when it comes to armor and damage. Harad, of course, since version four has been changed, um, more, uh, the RR9, of course, changed also, and Kant, you know, version five also changed. So there's a there's a lot of potential new dangers for more, for Gondor, but Gondor in itself also is buffed, also has a lot of value, and of course, a lot more money. You you cannot be hurt for money for a long time. You actually have a pretty <laughs> extreme economy, and you have enough towers and oh, sorry fortresses. That you can protect your economy rather effectively. And with that, we're gonna go and look at this effective army of Gondor, or should we say, Sons of Gondor. And here we are with Gondor's roster. To clarify, you're missing a couple of militia units. I think militia, uh, territorial guardsmen, militia, Gondor militia, and Gondor militia cavalry. Those are the least important, honestly, in my opinion. So, let's look at the Glamadon clansmen. Uh, 8 attack, 7 charge, and total defense of 17. 7 armor, 7 defense skill, 3 shield. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, pretty good. Your territory or, uh, territorial units or your fiefdom units are amazing. Lebanon Marines, Lebanon Marines, sorry. 5 melee attack, 7 missile attack, and 3 charge with total defense of 19. 7 armor, 6 defense skill, 6 shields. Pretty good unit. And they look amazing. They definitely look. I love the shields. Look amazing. And of course, we have next is the N plus pikemen. Five attack, so 15 attack actually. Seven charge bonus and total defense of 12. Six armor, six defense skill. Pretty good pikemen. If you wanna go fight Gondor, uh, Gondor? Rohan, this will be a must-have. Next we have is the Black Veil archers, with six mil attack, six missile attack, and four charge, with total defense of 13, eight armor, and five defense skill. Gondor gets a plus two in bow's buff, basically. That's why it's six. Gondor has some really good bowmen. Not, you know, not the levels of uh, the of um, Northern Dunedain, but pretty good. And of course, even Arch Militia, five missile attack. These, of course, these are better, but still, three missile attack, five missile attack, and two charge, with total defense of twelve, seven armor, and five defense skill. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good infantry. This is, this is pretty good. Pretty standard, if you ask me. Gondor Spearmen. 8 attack, 5 charge, and total defense of 27. 13 armor, 8 defense skill, 6 shield. Not bad. Not bad. Lower armor than rune, but I think higher defense in total. So yeah, pretty good. Lozar uh, Loza uh, Lozarnic Axemen. I can't pronounce I think it's Lozarnic Axemen. 10 attack, 8 charge, effective against armor, and total defense of 21. With 13 armor and 8 defense skill. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. 
Next we have is the Gondor Infantry. 10 attack, 5 charge, and total defense of course, 24. 13 armor, 6 attack, 6 defense, 13 armor, 6 defense skill, and 5 shield. One less shield than the Gondor Spearmen, which is fine. Gondor Archers. 5 mil attack, 7 missile attack, not bad, and 3 charge bonus, and defense skill of 19. With 13 armor and 6 defense skill. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Ah, there is the Pin of Gallen Cavalry. Your, one of your be Nope, your best cavalry. 9 attack, 11 charge, and total defense of 20. With 10 armor, 6 defense skill, and 4 shield. Man, is this cavalry amazing. I love the design. I love the look of this cavalry so much. The pike... The lances look amazing. Oh, I love them. And next we have is the box standard Gondor cavalry, which I'm disappointed by. 9 attack, 7 charge, and total defense of 21. This 12 armor, 5 defense skill, and 4 shields. Yeah, yeah. Just way better looking. Sorry, guys. And finally, we have the Ethelian Rangers with 7 mil attack, 8. Missile attack and free charge. Eight. That's that's amazing. Not you know not as amazing as some maybe more archer focused nations, but Gondor is not archer focused. Gondor just has an archer part. That's why they you know increased it by two. But by all means, Gondor is not an archer nation, and still has a missile attack. That's pretty good. And total defense of seventeen with eight armor and nine defense skill. Pretty pretty good unit. I like it. Of course, everybody likes the Athelian Rangers. Come on. And next we come to your elites with Minas Ithil Guardians. 18 attack, 10 charge, and total defense of 28. 18 armor and 10 defense skill. Boy are they good. Boy are they good. Then we have is the Guardians of Osgiliath with 10 attack, 8 charge, and total defense of 27. 16 armor and 11 defense skill. Yeah. Look amazing. Feel amazing. Amazing. And we have Warrens of the White Tower. Your arguably your best infantry. With 13 attack, 6 charge, and total defense of 34. 18 armor, 10 defense skill, and 6 shield. Yeah. They will hold the line and oh do they look amazing. Damn they look amazing. Citadel so Guard, your box standard uh, Box standard um, elite unit with 11 attack, 6 charge, and total defense of 44. 17 armor, 11 defense skill, and 6 shield. Not as amazing as you guys, but eh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Next is, of course, the Osgilia veterans. Not upgrade look, because you know the upgrade look gives them the you know the cool design. Nine attack, nine attack, eight miss, eight miss, like your best archer, and four charge bonus. With total defense of 25. 12 armor, eight defense skill, and five shield. They have the same uh, missile damage as your Ethelian Rangers. That's that's pretty good. And of course, 25 total defense is nothing to scoff at from our archery unit. And finally, we have the Sons of Numenor. Effective against armor, 13 attack, eight charge, and total defense of 32. 17 armor, and 15 defense skill. And they look amazing. Again, they look amazing. I love Gondor's roster. They look so amazing. And finally, we come to your legendary unit and your bodyguard. Let's first cover the bodyguards. 12 attack, 7 charge, and total defense of 37. 18 armor, 11 defense skill, and 8 shield. They will protect your general very effectively. And finally, my... You know, maybe favorite looking unit... In the game uh, and in the movies too i love this look i love this arm i want to see this army in the elven roster honestly how good it looks fountain guard 10 at 10 attack for a pikeman that's 30 attack charge bonus of 12 and total defense of 32 21 armor and 11 defense skill oh boy are they gonna stop everything they are insane by all means they are insane so what is Gondor? Gondor is a mixture of very powerful late game and very very weak early game units. Well, very standard early game units. Gondor will hold its own against Mordor, but Gondor cannot supply their armies. Their late game units cost in the 4,000, 5,000 gold, and upkeep is in 
you know, 15, 16, 1700 gold. It's not sustainable. You cannot sustain a great professional elite army of Gondor unless you have all the developed cities and everything. So that's that's the catch for Gondor. But hey, if your goal is to kill Mordor, maybe it's worth going in the red to destroy the evil. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. I greatly appreciate the support. Goodbye.